the risk of violence, the fear of violence, the reality of violence towards LGBT persons in Kenya is across the board, across the entire country. We've had uh, members who had uh, been victims of uh, hate crimes, where well, we would term it as hate crimes because they were attacked because of their gender identity. There was uh, violence happening to me, pulling my hair down on the floor and started to beat me. It's okay for them to hurt me or beat me up because the way I am. I didn't report anything to the police, but I keep it inside. I never told my family about the levels of violence that I experienced. Years and years, I was being mocked, insulted, threatened with harm for being myself. We're having um, lesbian women, for example, being subjected to corrective rape by their own family members in a bid to turn them straight. And these are really, really uh, severe human rights violations. In 2017, we were having a total of 198 cases that were reported of violence. And out of the 30 that were reported to law enforcement, not even one had access to justice. Such cases comes in where you report against the fam family for corrective rape. Uh, then the police also book you for unnatural sex. So largely because of that, the LGBTQ community did not come up and say that rape has happened. We've also had um, young gay men who has been attacked because they were gay. Our issue is that they are reported as uh, grievous uh, bodily harm, and we would want that to come out that this was a hate crime. Me and my partner, we were verbally and physically attacked. Three guys followed us around the corner and they literally started throwing stones at us. That was a crime we didn't report it because at that point in time, we were even scared to approach the police because the department itself was homophobic. After that incident, I'm like, I'm gay, whether you like it or not, when I look around the world, in each country, in each district, in each city, in each town and each village, there are people that are gay. I won't go back in the closet for anyone. Enough is enough. We need to stand up for our rights and speak out. It's the kind of violence that we are seeing. It's not just India, it's wherever you look. We don't know how to raise our voice and therefore are complicit in what's happening. We have an endemic problem of violence in our continent and structurally it affects many minorities, including women, refugees, children, persons who are marginalized. The African Commission has required all African states to enact legislation to prevent these incidences of violence. We can speak, 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 speak informally, complain. The law needs to be the place where we begin our response mechanism. It's also a wake-up call for us that we don't keep silence. People, especially when they don't know their right or where to go, they accept this kind of violence. We want to take it up to the government to say, look, Let's look at our protective laws. Are they really protective? So that's why one of the major uh, programs that we want to put in place is this, ensuring that we are protected by law when it comes to hate crimes. So I'm going to meet Kim Simplice. She's a special envoy for women and children. And she's our champion for hate crime legislation. And if we can get that through, we would have raised the international bar on what human rights look like for small countries. We're currently working on the anti-discrimination campaign, Live and Let Live. And the reason we're doing that really is because we're trying to tie it in 
to the new piece of legislation that we're currently working on, which is the anti-discrimination and hate crime legislation. People in Belize might say, oh, we don't have hate crime. Maybe we do, and it's not reported. We really can't allow that to continue. Under the hate crime, comes the stiffer penalties because you did it deliberately, because this person is, is a Catholic, because this person is an LGBT member. It tells victims that you're protected under the law and that this is wrong and that it is unacceptable. It really takes you from being a victim to a survivor. And that in itself is powerful. Until we become visible in law, we will not be complete citizens. And so it's my hope that the hate crime legislation that is being developed or discussed will reach parliament in a few months and finally bring us into the fold. If hate crime uh, legislation is introduced, first of all, crimes uh, that are committed because of a person's uh, race, uh, sexual orientation, gender identity would be recorded specifically and would show up in the statistics um, uh, for crimes committed in the country. And also, since this is a hate-based crime, um, definitely there would be um, a more harsher um, penalties attached to that. What I will tell any other government in any other country, yes, I know that sometimes it's hard to make difficult decisions, but if you want to live in a free and a peaceful society, do the right thing. Work for the marginalized people within your society, because that community is one that suffers the most. Because the law is for everyone, rich, poor, urban, rural, gay, straight, we know we can do better. If we are honest with ourselves, we can do better. Human Dignity Trust has, has been very influential in, in our work, um, especially in the anti-discrimination and, and hate crime uh, legislation and moving that forward. As a country, I think we need to move away from the hate and the discrimination and the stigma to more of a loving society, a loving community, a peaceful community.